Ratter, Jeremy John, born 8643, named, classified, numbered, boy, fair hair, average height, average weight, no special identifying features, class, inherited, upper middle, a context which he rejected, financial status, moderately wealthy, a context which he accepted, education, paid for, grammar and public school, a privilege designed to cripple both mind and body, it failed. In the classroom he learnt nothing, in the cloisters, rebellion, religion, Church of England, a dark spiritual cul-de-sac in which the only light that glowed was the fire of his indignation. The seeds of his atheism were sown in the wooden pew, watered in the font. He knew more than them, but had no words for it. Nationality, English, an empire had been waiting on his coming. The treacle slow rivers of Africa, the dust brush plains of India, all his for the taking. His attitudes, language and culture were predetermined by the emotive, inbuilt prejudices constructed around the trilogy of God, Queen and Country. Firstly, they attempted to strip him of the totality that was his. Secondly, they taught him that to deviate is to be alienated. But he listened with only one ear. So who am I? An idea created out of the blue, the red, white and blue. You knew me, but I didn't know you. So who am I? A reflection of the needs of those around me. Nothing that I imagine myself to be. The person who I might have been has been fooled with ideas of who I ought to be. Yet something still exists of the omnipotent self that I was. Something beyond the tyranny of social demands. A parallel me, covert, wily, and always listening with the other ear. The illusion of stability is central to the social lie, a commodity supplied over the meat counter. Carnage is an everyday norm, blood an absolution. Trapped by conception, destroyed by conceptualization, dead already, we fear to question the precepts of our condition. Better a comfortable lie than a thorny truth. This reality is a structure of which I am not a part. I simply live in it. Take what you like, nobody owns anything. No one believes what they see, but here we are looking at it. The conditions are laid down as law, the agreements made, the standards set. Law is prohibition. The state, the church, school, family, our attitudes, you and I, forms of prohibition. So again, who am I? I am the barbarian, insane. I am the romantic, no tortured flesh bag. I am he who scales mountains to bring you a pebble, he who swims oceans to catch you a raindrop. The deserts, the ice fields, the rolling savannah, each of them are touched with my shadow, distilled in my desire. But here I am obliged to shuffle, my head hung low, surrounded by the despots who claim that they own paradise. The Preacher Bless you, my child, for you have inherited the sins of your father. The Teacher I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. The Politician we are doing everything in our power to ensure peace. It is for that reason alone that we are prepared to wage war. But, but, the psychiatrist. I think you'll find that what you're trying to say is nothing. Nothing that is tangible in this maze of lies. Nothing but the brittle smell of cigar held in my father's breath. The clamor of time. He who warmed the armchair long before I needed it. To seek your real self is to be guilty of heresy. That is Christ's law. To seek your own truth is to be guilty of social trespass. That is Caesar's. Give unto neither. Take only for yourself. So who are the real martyrs? You and I. Brother, sister, you and I. Intelligence is no more than the ability to reflect commonly adopted views. Any group anywhere is right. Truth is not an absolute, but an agreement, a majority decision. The truth may well be a truth, but it is also and always a subjective lie. National good is notional good. National good bleeds national blood. They die in the trenches as flags fly above the stately homes of the parasites, the exploiters, the usurers, the scum. The flags are the rags that wrap the bodies left on the doorstep 
used up, poppies, children all. The cross was too great to bear. So who eats the meat of Flanders? Who swills down the bread with the blood of the Vichy? The parasites, the exploiters, the usurers, the scum. Or was it cake? Eat then, drink, the blood in its meat are yours, spilled for your closeted luxury, your coveted riches, spilled that your privilege could remain intact. Toll these bells, toll these hells, they are the garden in which you would have me play. My child is unborn in your reality. What then might ring the changes? What tool to use? What word that has not already been purloined? The tools, the words, were a part of what might have been changed. Loops, traps and paradoxes. Totalitarian reality. The mountain is not destroyed by your walking around it. There is no way out. Nothing that is anything more than the shifting of a grain of sand in the desert to another spot in the same desert. The desert is all. Your condition completely contained. I can't change it for you. There's no way out because there's no way in. The door was bricked up at birth. I had to be taught my age, taught my mind, body, heart and soul. A synthesis is as close as I can get. We cannot conceive beyond our ability to conceive. What choice? Left, right? Show me the scholar who went both ways and I'll show you a fool or a liar. Choice is limitless. Yet there is no choice. To unlock the door is to be faced with the same unlocked door. There's no other way of expressing it. Nothing else to express. Nowhere else to go. The sound of one hand clapping is the sound of the cell door slamming. Philosophy is semantic. A way around the word, a way around the world. Babel wasn't built in a day. Everything is a confirmation of the status quo, a semantic like myself. I'm as many people as know me. Who are you? Words are traps from which values and moralities are constructed, and the words themselves so emotively biased that reinterpretation is rendered impossible. Result? Values and moralities, deadly traps, semantic death. To seek solace in an inner reality is to confirm the outer reality which created the vocabulary of the inner reality. Unaware of the ghastly paradox, we seek sanctuary in an idea of self. Yet that too is an extension of the same lie. The sanctuary, the peace that it offers, the paradox and its confusion are all made of the same matter, the matter of words, semantic conditions. There is no way to the beyond. The beyond is an ephemeral waterhole inhabited by the mystics, dried up, cracked and cancered, the topology of their minds. The totality that enfolds us is nothing but the sum total of the social agreement, as binding as it is demeaning, the semantic whole. Life is a semantic gas chamber. We are committed to this set of conditions to perpetuate social myths, and to maintain the balance of power. Yet no one knows their source, and even less their aim. Who is responsible? An arbitrary set of ideas has become reality. The disagreements are too complex to be ordinarily considered, the risks too great. We all die, together. We are sold life as if it was a gleaming product, a shiny automobile. Offered this luxury ride to nowhere, we gladly accept. Well, be reasonable. What option do we have? We are told that we should be grateful, and by God we are. But when the dream machine starts to show fault, we are bewildered. Why doesn't it work, damn it? Lousy piece of junk. It must be my fault. Everyone else's seemed to work. It must be me. Guilt. Shame. What have I done that is wrong? ineptitude. There is no way in which the fault can be understood except through the terms of the initial agreement. But we were given the shiny automobile without a manual. There is no manual. It was lost a long, long time ago. The paradox has bitten. The fault creates aberration. 
the living nature of unsolution. Irrationality is a myth. The true irrational is the irrationality against which it is measured. Guilt, fear, ineptitude, fodder for the motorway crash, fodder for the psychiatrist's couch, the pew, the ashram. It was so wonderfully shiny, how can it have gone wrong? Oh, woe is me, little me, poor me, bad me, naughty me. Reversion. Go straight to your room and don't come down till I say so, naughty, naughty, naughty. The bear trap crushes limbs. We are made to feel responsible for a set of ideas that we didn't believe in the first place. And when they don't work, we blame ourselves. The fault is submerged in layers of fear and guilt. A second-hand motor. The chrome is beginning to peel off. It breaks down. You again, huh? If I've told you once, I've told you time and time again. Fear, guilt, aberration. It's a patchwork job, the third-hand, fourth-hand fuck-up that is us. But we can't let go of the investment. It's already cost us so much. We're left driving our lives on bald tires with no steering wheel and brakes that are an act of faith. And faith never stopped a juggernaut. Quite the contrary. The agreement is bankrupt. The car dealers have all gone home. The fuel supplies have dried up. Yet still we sit behind the non-existent wheel, aimlessly turning the dial of the in-car stereo. This is London. Here is the news. You will don't. This is Washington, D.C. Here is the news. You don't will. The lucky ones are electric robots. This is the voice of tomorrow. Have a nice day. Enjoy. Madness or mysticism. The last resort in the faulty reality. The psychic breaker's yard. Wham! The hammer has fallen. Three nails is all that it takes. Give one to your father. So, to the politic, the state, the men. Ah, their prejudice. What reason theirs? They order and structure around their chosen right to be divine. Who chooses what, where? They order and structure around an immovable idea that demands total submission. Bloody warriors, the meat is too rich. Tomorrow they bathe in steel. The individual's role within the state. They want my unborn child to be prepared for a techno-industrial economy. Art will be marginalized. The individual's development within the state. They take the tiny form that is my child. Trickles of blood fall from the prematurely cut umbilical. They demand that the child's first word be death. Protection of the individual within the state. They give my child war. The individual, the work ethic and the state. They steal the body, trip on the trailing cord. The child screams, the mother is clamped, eye paralyzed. Hopeless isolation within four minutes of birth. In four minutes, man can run a mile, create Armageddon, and destroy a history of withness. The child had never been apart, never been without. The individual, the family, and the state. The child is thrown like a mud ball into the trenches. The boots are so sodden, so caked with war, that they barely feel the tiny form pressing into the clay. But of course, no one is personally responsible. We deeply regret that the role of the church within the state. The censor smashes into my hands. I search for the squashed body of my child. Again the censor smashes into my hands, splintering the bones. The child is gone. He gave his only begotten son. Death, the individual and the state. The television screen is vacant. It always was. Fulfillment within the state. Swallow bile. Cheat the morgue. Democracy. The illusion of involvement. 
the illusion of effect, the illusion of cause. None. None whatsoever. Democracy is the sleight of hand that shoots its children in the streets of Northern Ireland. Heard the one about the thick Irishman. Starves its families in the valleys of Wales. Taffy was a Welshman. Taffy was a thief. Occupies its plundered lands in the highlands of Scotland. Heard the one about the mean Scotsman. Guilt, wearing the face of prejudice, wearing the face of humour. Democracy. Ha, ha, ha. The ballot box, like the television, gives at most four options. And like the television, and more often than not by the television, we are told that this represents public opinion. Those chosen to represent us, the people, promote themselves with the same insidious techniques employed to sell detergent, and in all probability use the same advertising agency. Those in power are those who are best able to play the game, and to play, you have to pay. Democracy is the prerogative of the parasites, the exploiters, the usurers, the scum. They promote dissent as terrorism, and a generation is forced underground. Those who surface will be ridiculed, punished, or worse, integrated. Insisting on logics as convoluted as those held by the brethren who so greatly profit through the confusion, democracy is forced to police its people while celebrating itself in the spilling of their blood. Don't you realize that the peasants want the strap? History is tomorrow's reason. Tomorrow's reason is today's experience. Ideas are the rationalization of experience. Culture is the exploitation of experience. But experience itself has been so debased through capitalization that we are left to survive somewhere within the schism that exists between it and our own unrealized existence. Existence is a distant memory of pre-childhood, long forgotten. By definition, experience has become unreal. When did you last feel without feeling that you were feeling? Belief is the manifestation of doubt. Doubt, the only sanity. Sanity, the only desire. Desire has no object, only symbols of itself. Life is a symbol of desire. All else is simple conformity to ideas of self. Who do you live through? The stench of memory, sour arena. I'm exhausted by demands to be a self that I am not. I'm so tired of interpretations. My actions are not made to be interpreted. I'm no pantomime dame, no impersonator. Omnipotent self dies, self-willed by its own eternities. Nonetheless, I can see an integrity, an act in which I am defined by I. Super-self rides on. <laughs> but overawed by ridicule, I once again become a confusion of all that I might have been. I shoot. It almost dies. Strands of matter cling on. They are the false definitions that will not budge. Oh, they cling about the heart and soul, the purge of memory, the coffin that is my father's armchair. I cannot fully rid myself of becoming. They must die. Ideas of self pass by, this one, that one. Faded mirrors in the fairground, each distorting in its own way. There are no mirrors to self. The omnipotence of it all excludes such singularity. I die so that I may duck back. The cerebral patchwork, brain departments. First floor, fixtures. Second floor, repairs. Third, fourth, the lift grinds to a halt. You reach out to me, your lips, full, moist blue in the neon light. I feel myself harden to your touch and feel the lift lurching and rising again. Fifth floor, fantasies. Sixth, seventh floor, unfulfilled desire. Eighth, ninth, tenth floor, consummation. Eleventh, chapel of rest. Each has its own integrity. Today I am the eagle, integrity to an idea of self, 
planets orbiting the sun, self-gravitating, self-seeking, each in its own way. Today I am the crow, set to pick at an idea of majesty, the universe that they rule, the universe that they create and destroy. I am become a million aspects of myself, each dead before the other. Ideas are manifestations of doubt, rootways around the flesh of me, flesh and its fleshness. I take up myself in a bid to discover something of you, a short circuit to my desire, synthesis, ideas of self contained, contaminated, lost in the maze of reason. Optic ties, rootways to form the lie of the I. The identity of matter rests as it is, loose in fleshy sockets. The eye slides one way, held, we die another, beaten to death in the channel of my eyes. The shape, me, it fades before I can grasp a fraction of it. I never saw my own eyes, yet how idly I bear the two. I believe that I see, after all, seeing is believing. I can even believe the idea of it, believe the interpretation of that idea, believe the existence manifested within that idea. So, I adopt stance. But what develops here? Only desire. Is everything a mere symbol of itself? Life is a symbol of desire. All else is simply ideas of self. Jeremy John Ratter, Total Graffiti. He exists as a spectre to rifle my desire. What chance did he have, conceptualized before he was conceived, wanted but not needed? They stole pieces of his universe and sold it back to him as form. He was materialist, not material. He mattered, but had no matter. The stolen property was forced upon him. Honest, Gav! Ideas of life, arbitrary semantic decisions that he was fooled by a conspiracy to accept as fact. There was no essence. That was destroyed by his presence. He was everything, then he was he, but never was he I. No, I was slaughtered as a part of the bargain. Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy Ratter, the me that isn't I. Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy Ratter, the me that's made to die. Time and time again. Father, you needed me. But I didn't need you. The property was object, the insidious nature of the conspiracy. Cup, flower, horse, book, father, Jeremy. I could no more see the others than I could see myself. Yet I accepted the ideas. I had no means of reflection through which the objects could be assessed. I was given form through idea and submitted to both. I became a receiver of interpretations that were promoted as facts. Being unable to assess, I extracted. I became the consumer with no rights, the owner of a subcontract reality. Snatched from the omnipotent hole from which I had so innocently clambered, I became the materialist logic of everyone around me. A sad reflection. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Ooh. Did they ask me? Hear me? Bewildered. Is that your motorway? Where to? Did you? Your battlefield? Yes, your child. Is it how? That? Is this your universe? I'm lost. Where's the parking lot? Whose am I? What I? Who I? Dead in all these moments. But wait. No! Poetry ceases where life begins, forgotten in the hand-rolled bodies of Treblinka. The shame is in the grass. My own impertinence, I just don't care. Heads roll on the sidewalks in praise of ordinariness. Unique self stands disgusted by the pit. The camera can never lie, whereas its subject can do nothing but. Were you there? No, I missed it. I was collateral. How then do you know? Cathode ray intervention. These lines upon my face are cheap mirrors of the real nature of the sorrow. 
semantic confidence. Beware. But what is dishonesty? How can I avoid my own impressions? It is not for me to prove myself. I can't avoid doing what I've done. Did you ask me? I can't avoid doing what I'm about to do. Did you? Who's going where? Are they? Where's the who? Is it me, then? I believe in you. I believe in you every time that the question arises. It makes no difference to me if you don't believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, I've got nothing to say to you. If you do believe in yourself, there's nothing that I need to say to you. We're mirrors to each other. We can only see in each other what we can see in ourselves. If you can't see anything in yourself, where does that leave me? You can only understand what you can understand. I can't make you understand, because to understand, you have to understand. I can neither help nor hinder. It is you alone who accepts the definitions that cause your discomfort. There is nothing beyond. I am blameless. I love you because I don't exist as a part of you. I cannot exist without you. I am always beside you. I blend in your beauty. It is mine also. You have always left that behind. I cannot even own myself. What then is our fear? There is no context for it. Moments are not matter. This is merely an agreement. We can always leave each other behind. The cave is empty. Who cares for the rotting matter? It crawled away. There is no authority but yourself. Everything is idea. Nothing exists. Mother love is a lie. Father love is a lie. They don't care any more than the rest of us. And how much do we care? Relationships are histories, non-progressive nostalgia. Assumption is the dialogue of relationships, notions. Who the hell are you? I select a cling wrap cheese and salad roll. How did you know that I'd want it? Well, love, if you hadn't, someone would have. I am taken to the slaughterhouse, line up outside the washroom. I pull back the clinging wrapper, slide my mouth over the fat dome of dough, catching dribbles of mayonnaise on my eager tongue, delighting in the prosthesis. It is an assumption made within our projected relationship. They have us listed. Destroy their ease. Nostalgia is a travesty. I have died alone too many times to be convinced by the past. There is no background, no backdrop. The past is a false meter to a false present. The present cannot exist in context to the past. Play your semantic tricks if you will. Juggle your definitions. But I shall not be contained. Well, love, if you're not, someone will be. By incorporating the past into the present, the present becomes a permanent past, forever unfolding, but never lived. The elephant sleeps. I would be ether to describe my love. Passion, lightning in a pencil box, real confusion, unreal fusion, socialization, birdsong, anger, frustration. The singularity of the agreed vocabulary excludes progressive dialogue. I awake in pain, scar-like burning across my skull, scalp. My desire to explain races in frenzied rage through my brain, leaving tattered debris, half-formed words, numbness. I had wanted to say that I loved you, but the words have been avalanched. The lightning illuminates the window, striking the glass bowl. Refraction. The shards glow in the retreating light. How do we ever sleep like this? The mirror misted with rain, the words obscured and rimy, each letter retrieved from the tired glacier, brushed up and reassembled into words. I love you, separating themselves from each other every time that the lightning flashes or the thunder rolls. I lift you high above my body. Exclusive no more, I let you fall. We lie together, oh, never this way before. I swirl you about in the purple dawn. We see the sun, a burning hole in the crystal sky. Will it leave us stranded here? In the passing storm, 
I have become the pale blue bruise across the bridge of your nose. A trickle of blood runs from your nostril. I seek no gender. I am object. I didn't care or know until I was taught to care and know. Now I don't care if I know, and I don't know if I care. I was given the rules without the game, so who's father? I am a child. You can have me. I'm no one's. No one owns me. I have no gender. I am object, sexless, dissolute. Life I live. Life is empirical, the matter of concept, an intellectual exercise that has no integrity. Integrity exists beyond consideration, outside. The real never, never. But was it ever? I have not reflected, I have extracted. I am the parasite. Your reality is the host. I have other bodies from which to suck. I wait for you. You do not come. Always the words are the expression of it. I am half mad with them. What's my name? You seem to know better than I. What's my game? I have none. I see no futures, no alternatives, no creation, no destruction. Yes, at the moment I am alone. How else? To suppose anything but my aloneness is to describe the nature of another's death. I have murdered too well, slain too neatly. I stand by your window, wishing that you could see. I cannot invite myself to your side. You perceive me as a shadow. Oh, I come every day. Go, too. You violate with your ideas of space. I never ask. I shall take the wrongs of history and cast them into another past. So filled was I, so thrilled with the me of it. You carry that away in your basket. I didn't want to differentiate. It happened in our distancing of each other. Systems are self-perpetuating. They need no assistance from me. This moment before you, the last lazy day of gesture, I reach around and beneath you, the table is polished clean, the sad agonies of our bedtime walks. I lie awake with your dreams, bound in our wordy bondage. My fingertips describe hope in the fur of your body. Reason lies back against us like discarded pillows woven in intricate patterns. I carefully avoid memories, flashlight, you push me aside, whispering someone else's name. I resolve planets around my desolation, looking deep into the skies. There is no one to earmark my turnings. I reach for your outstretched arm, feel the soft pulse of your life, the saline moistness of your flesh. I hold you as if you were a marker to some distant truth, a blind jest that as yet I have not comprehended. You draw me closer. I relax. But again you push me away, my arm falling to the wooden floor, beside myself. <laughs> I slowly ease the planet from my skull, bowed. I tear out the silly sadness from my eyes, not damp. <laughs> I run my hand across your temple, hoping to ride a more personal sorrow, a closer anguish. You roll away, the shadow of your body lost in the patterns of the sheets. I temper my breath and slide onto the marble slab. Ah, mountain! This lamentation, sweet jubilation, cruel salvation, high at last. Above you all, carried only by my fear and the courage to overcome it. Christ, we need the calm, need the escape. Christ, it's so tight. Christ, I can't wait. Mountain, ah, oh, mountain. I pace the night in sallow darkness, hoping on the dawn. What falsity I carry, this wig upon my head. I tear away the last strands of what I believe to be my substance, my matter. 
and you awake. You claim that you have been listening. Listening to what? Listening? I'm listening. But what have you been listening to? I'm listening. You have something to say? I had. Yes, I had, but it has fallen away. The bondage of words is broken, and I have no words for what I feel, nothing to say, nothing at all. I have travelled so far, tormented, simply to love you, but the words are not enough. I stumble here for you. How that failed, how it was nowhere enough, how it must be extended. I cannot rest. With such intensity we argue these terms. Our bewilderment is in sometimes believing our own meanings. It is the mind that creates concepts of the mind, the mirror describing itself. It cannot see itself, misty reflections of paradise's playground. Too wordy in its wisdom, the mind cannot be mindless. It has to find something to do. There is no psychology, only total control. No control is a statement of absolute control. You cannot let go. Denied access to our inner workings, we define ourselves by employing semantic devices. There are no structures. And just because you created some, it doesn't mean that they exist. In that sense, we are all paranoid. Keep it for the dreamers. It flows beyond all. Security is illusion, knowledge merely the tide mark of our ignorance. We are a series of unrelated events, the language of the rose. The scent takes no account of the falling petal. They are not one. Unless you can stand the weight of it, stand aside. There is no study of the finite. It is finished before it was begun, fallen away before it existed. We postulate infinity in our fear of the finite. Throw away your past, abandon your future, neither exists. We cannot come to terms with ourselves because there are no terms to come to terms with. We are always ahead of ourselves, waiting on the interpretations, waiting on the conditions. We meet ourselves only as the sum total of those taught responses, semantic devices. It is that idea of self that leaves behind the trailers of conceit that we name reality. The alternatives are hidden memories of what we might have been, if only, if only. There really isn't the time we know that we have never existed. I am constantly defied by the child that is my own memory, he can test me with nothing but myself. My growth is his swollen belly. I swipe at him and injure only my own forgotten histories. We leave each other strangled in the confusion of our pasts. I wasn't asked. I was told. I was given a stolen life, which in turn was stolen from me. Choice is illusion. Faith is death. Death is fiction. Fiction is the fact of your life. Your life is death. It doesn't happen twice. You get around the wordiness if you can. You bear something of yourself that I may be free. Can you hang on whilst knowing the form of the cross? I tear away the veils and suck you dry. I am a product of sexual placation, a feeble result of translated desire, a child of our time, born of frustration, struggling to forget my baptism of fire. I am the garbage of my parents' love nest, a plaything to fill a terrible void. For a while I laid their fears to rest, but in the end there was only the word and the resounding emptiness of it. And in the beginning, the question, yes, body, somebody, shape, of course, my body, my form, it is mine, solution, matter, material, an intricate weave, my body, dilute, perverted, crucified, 
my form, transfixed, split like an atom, cleaved like the skull, my body, dissolute, because the reality of the void that exists between the beginning and the end was too much for my parents to cope with alone. They needed me because of the emptiness that they felt, needed me to re-establish the bondage that once had held them together. I was the missing link to the broken chain. They lived through me. I was the mediator, reconciling them to the absurdity of life. I was the clown who tumbled away their sense of pointlessness, the Piero who cried away their tears of privation. Roll up, roll up for the circus of dreams. Life isn't always quite what it seems. Oh, yes, I fulfilled their wishes, the little idol, the object, holding them together with my tiny hand. But they watched over me too closely, day and night, imposing conditions on what might have been an unconditional love. I rebelled, and as I ceased to ease their problems, it was I who was accused of being the problem. I became a problem child, the barbarian, insane. I had given form to their existence, but the weight had become too much for me to bear. They had vacated themselves for me, Jeremy, Jeremy, me thing. They had avoided their own responsibilities by imposing them on me, Jeremy, Jeremy, me thing. The church blesses such self-sacrifice as theirs, praising the Christian motives that they believe are behind it. The state commends such citizenship, applauding the sense of social responsibility that it claims is at its root. Everything conspired to silence me, yet silent I will not be. Because the conspirators were unable to be themselves, because their life and their love was a semantic, I became an object of loneliness, an object of fear, greed, desire, despair, sorrow, hope, failure, success, wish, will, demand, pity, joy, ill omen. I shall not die on that stupid cross, that mould of motherhood, that mould of fatherhood. I shall live. Silent, I will not be. Firstly, a question. Yes. Body, somebody, shape, of course, my body, my form. It is mine, solution, matter, material, an intricate weave. My body, diluted, perverted, crucified. My form, transfixed, split like an atom, cleaved like the skull. My body. Last night I dreamt that I was standing by Gethsemane's wall, green and night. The olives had been harvested, the rich oil already scented with precious essences, olibanum, sandalwood, patchouli. Your breasts were birdsong, rising in the dawn. I lay upon your back, our arms outstretched. It was a reenactment, but this time you gave yourself to life. I stood by the wall, not knowing which way to turn. The mob was angry. I could hear their voices livid. Turning, I see their stakes lurid, burning. Run, master, run! There were floral tributes, bell-like flowers, white and heavily scented. Self had died. The garden was empty. I dream often of the wall, but normally he chooses to die, Christ child, dead already. He dies for self. Behind every man a cross, mother, it is woman. He sees that as a death, an agony worn like the flesh, 
this flesh. Impose your sterility, sordid seekers of truth. There is no truth, only agreement. The lake is dry for you, not sucked. I wipe my lips with the rags of your feeble faith. I wasn't he. You dilute me with ideas of death, your cross. Bear it alone, Jesu. Say not that I conspire. It is your guilt. Bear it alone. Sperm flesh stains my bed. Meat. The color of your lips. Drawn across the ivory towers of your mouth. Gulp. Tight knot of gob that burns now within me. Anger, rage. Take this body. I am no feeble Christ. A curse whispered through sensual lips, spluttered through the spittle. Whose guilt? He hangs in glib delight above our naked bodies, nails our flesh to his awry cross. I am that stake, that pole, that crucifixion but he will not have it so. Turn then, Jesu, turn to your tormentors. Who are they? There are greater powers than self. Forgive them, Father, but forgive who? There is nothing to forgive. No one. Down from those pious heights, you papal mascot, royal flag-bearer, goat billy, I vomit for you, Jesu. Forgive? No, no, I cannot forgive. He hangs in glib delight, nailed to the limit of his vision, his filthy cross. Suicide, visionary, death reveler, rake, rapist, Jesu, earth mover. You dug the pits of Auschwitz. The soil is rich in your guilt, death force, enigma, enola of the sad heavens. The nails are the only trinity. Hold them in your corpsey gracelessness. I'll hammer them firm. The cross is the virgin body of womanhood, defiled by your reason. You are nailed to that. So why lie upon your back, master, when I, I... She faces me. See, master? Woman touched. It is you who violates with your guilt. I'll hold her if you will not. I'll hold her. In his back is fear sweat. Lord God Almighty, how he hangs in his complacency. I see histories of hatred because he could not turn to face the body, held by the false trinity of self, the Father, the Son, and the holy guilt. Rather than engender that other gender, mother, the maiden, woman, he hangs limp, distorted. Yet it is we who must suffer still. Foul twister of our bodies, I had learnt to love. I see them in the wooden seats, empty wooden seats, coffin, split, spat, odour, scent. The cave is a void. Defile the dead, he defiles himself, simple suicide. He calls me brother. There are no words for my contempt. I chew on his stupid depression, rancid as it is. Above my body, the executioner hangs in contemplation of the grave, the pit, above the body of my love. Every woman is a cross in his filthy theology, every woman a cross in his arrogant delight. I want your body, Jesu, not your blood. You can keep that for far more tricky sacrifices than this. Every woman is a cross by you, sunk to earth, rooted in your fear. Yet I have a spunky idea for you, a ravaging idea. Listen, they sink her in the ground, see? Why, her nails are yours. Go now, go, take yourself away. Sick I am of your spread. They're no palms, they're razor edges, you stupid boy. I pop out the nails. One, two, three. Now, now, will you face her, will you? Of course, of course, your body. Face her, face! You bleed, yes, of course you bleed, sorry. But, but look, she has bled for you, see? Come now, bleed for her. 
just this once, remember? See, she does not run from you. Hug that form, hug, rub, rub that form, rub delight, damn you, delight. The master hugs his awry cross, lame by the cross, limp by the cross. I stand by the wall, defeated. But look, now his eyes are opening. The wooden column responds to the stroke of his tongue. Spurts of fluid run to earth. The earth moves, lives. The column opens, a tiny wet crack, flesh-coloured like meat, like her lips. Oh, the odor, the warmth. What finer liquor than this pious Jesu? He strengthens, pulls apart the cloth, and enters the crack. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, slowly now, slowly. The column takes on shape, shapely shape, like a bottle, a cello. The crosspiece, of course, forms arms that reach out to hold, to warm, to caress. The back bends and delights the spine, central nervous system, is freed into rivulets of flesh joy, tiny moments marked in the body, head that forms, classical, gurgle, soft speech, feel, ears, eyes, nose, mouth, lips, teeth, bite to bite, in this their first embrace, lost property of the fool's cross. He sees at last the beautiful womanhood, that he had chosen to ignore, the beautiful womanhood that he had chosen to nail to his cross, but which now has become it. But no, alas, dreams conspire to confuse. He chooses to hang there still, dying in shame of the lie that was his mother's virginity, his nobility, blind, blind, bound, trust like a turkey, cold, senseless, bloodlet suicide. Die on your crosses, martyrs. Die on your woodpiles. Die on your ideas of self. Share nothing, sterile, impotent, fuck-love prophets of death. You are the ultimate pornography. The pornography of fear. Cock-fear, cunt-fear, man-fear, woman-fear. The pornography of fear. Yes, he died for his own sins. I stand by Gethsemane's wall. I place my finger firmly on the base of your spine. We smell the sweet perfume of rosemary, thyme, lavender, and we fuse. How I might have loved you. A history of fear, a tradition of oppression written in the moisture of his eyes. By Gethsemane's wall we achieve our separate orgasms together how we might have loved each other. The nails are his only trinity. The thorns are his desire. I cannot persuade him away from this dank garden, watered with his tears, tortured with his fears. The pockets of hope are my futures, away from his self-conscious death, hopelessly disguised. Oh, how I hope, how I hope. Judas wears a mean mask. His lipstick is lip seal, unspoken death sealed with a kiss. To the woodpile martyr, to the cross master, dead master, father, dead father, son, dead son, ghost, ghoul, corpse, nail or thorn, is it in my flesh? No, it is the spear, the needle, the witch's spike. Ah, incubus, incubus. I search of freedom, I... Another search. Hold your pinprick wounds. I have other pricks to hold. Better this, Jesu, my love. But no, you'd rather wear that ring upon your own brow. Your guilt, your death, drab war on your breath. Warfare, your war, Austovich, Hiroshima. A cerebral game, your game, war game, hung up. I shall not hang beside you. Your cross, your body, yourself. Come now, why accept your churlish death? Why act so penitent? Are these the nails from your sweet flesh if you'd but once relent? Give your life and love to me. Cast away this sanctitude. 
Open your eyes that you may see there's kinder offerings than the blood. Give something other than your pain, something apart from your piety. I've seen you suffer again and again. Give something other than your guilt for me. And if you cannot, then die, finally, for God's sake, die. But don't expect me to share your grave, your cave, pit. You chose, but not for me, pornographer, poor little rich man. I'll turn to anybody, Lord Jesus, turn to anybody and fuck and suck and blow. I'll fuck for you, I'll suck for you, my Christ, I'll blow for you. Turn to me, suffer not, little Lord, turn to me. I am the cross that you bear, all those bodies are me, all the corpse heap, all the flesh pot is I, all manner of person I. Turn not away, Lord Jesus, turn not away, I am come to you. Come, I shall love you hard and strong, and then your mother, time and time again. There is no guilt, I have no gender. By Gethsemane's wall we achieve our separate orgasms together. How we might have loved each other. Come to me, come, wet my flesh with that holy mouth. What? You turn away? Come, you dare not. Crown bearers, wear your crowns of thorn. The trumpets will herald your stupidity. The cows will suck cud over your dreams pain men your brows bleed your mother's blood it was your decision body body on body where the division where the line between the two this dreadful scar between the inner and the outer the real and the super real there is no unreal no fantasy no dream no beyond delusion no ideal no deal no consequence all elements of the same whole, 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 void, empty, all vessels. Come, sip this wine, the blood, the wafer, where the division? Nothing but the difference between self and other selves, condition and intuition. I was not taught clarity. My vision was misted by reason, heart, desire, conditioned resistance, out of sight, out of mind, no mind, changed mind, never mind, no constant, my desire, permanence. My passion is mute against such monotheism, a deity whose only interest is control. In the beginning, I was brutalized by the word. The reality that I was taught, or rather tortured to accept, is no more than a sordid agreement with which I don't agree. Reality is a fabrication manufactured by those who juggle with power and conjure up concepts. It suits the program of oppression. There is no war which is mine. The trenches are the shit-filled fonts of cathedral and chapel alike. In one foul breath, the clergy bless the dead and curse the living in God's name. But in God's name, can it ever end? Where do I exist within this web of hypocrisy? I may as well not exist. Am I no more than the afterbirth of a dust-filled history book? The agreements were made without my consent. The agreements are still made without my consent, despite my existence. Religion is a lie, a refined form of superstition that cannot fulfill its own prophecies. Lies. Who's to say that I shall or shall not? My name? What's my name? Is that your fear? Faith is a reflection of fear, the mother of fear, the matter of fear. Systems of belief, learning, understanding, law and order, language expression, a fear of multiplicity. There is no normal. Insanity is where you are, not who or what you are. I inherited no guilt, no poison flowed through my umbilical. My purity is a catatonic reality that is everyone's right. I was conditioned to accept the inhumanity of man 
so that man could remain inhuman. He succeeds. No dispute there. He gave his only begotten son, gave nails to pierce the flesh, tears to dilute the virgin blood. Religion is an expression of sexual fear. Truth is a personal ghetto, wholly subjective. There are no words for the way that I feel. My perception is an internal, personal fact, real fact, mine. There is no fixed idea, perhaps the needle for such normality. I am withdrawn, fact. Who are these men who split atoms and skulls alike? Who they? Who they? They wish to expose the difference, but there is none, fact withdrawn, catatonic islands, everyone their own, no valley. Where is that other order when there is no order but control? The reality bankers seek to capitalize on their assets, broaden their market. They invest in a derelict future. I shall not pay their taxes. The personality engineers will not accept that my child sees the trees as an extension of her own body. What then? Is it a sickness that she has not found the common agreement? Is she so deranged that she has transcended it? Are the agreements so precise that there are no mistakes? I shall not have it. I'd rather die in body than die this living death. Social body, I purge thee now. And with all the strength that I possess, I repudiate the soul. So often I have been reprimanded. No, they have said no. But why caution my passion? There is no other way in which this ordinariness may be transcended. I am not the set of conditions that they would have me be. Can I not open my arms to other horizons? What if I was to spread like water, dance like a mountain spring, or come and go as the tide? Shape, yes, yes, shape, have I never been a man? Is that such a crime? Never, no, never. Am I nothing but the idea of man? Is it a crime to desire more, simply more, more simply? Is it a sin to desire myself? But not ideas of self. No, the words of description are yours. I seek self of no word, the I gone icon of, oh, the feely self. Oh, icon. I am at war, an irredeemable dissenter given a second-hand reality, words for a conditional world. This is not world, it is word, a nation, not I. I have no family, I am not of society. Oppression is the state of birth, yet birth is an act, not a state, act, not word. I was never born. I was conceptualized. I haven't felt. I haven't the means. Yet I seek meaning in my own unworded symbols, search virtue in unlearning. I hunt out inner landscapes, geometries that reflect my dignity, my sense, withdrawn, alien, catatonic. To subscribe to the control of thought is to turn the lock on the gas chamber door. Mother, you needed me, but I didn't need you. Each has a name, each a dream. The control that you seek is the tortured gasp of the cattle truck victim. There can be no combination, there is none. Why accept a world at war, hate and war, starvation of the fat belly mind, greed, perversity? Why claim it as a right? Let the fool revel in his master's victory. I seek more precious goals, more personal blindness. That reality is a nightmare. Keep it for the spacemen. I am the barbarian. Yet who are these men who crucify those who would hang beside the multi-Christs, all rotting, the chief priest elders on this day. Why do they crucify? 
because that is their explanation. Their lie is at stake. They believe in their own death, infinitely finite. Die, for God's sake, die. Soft night, arms that comfort sorrow, each a terrible magic. The hair of body, see, I stroke it, softly stroke it. I do not take it from you, see. A mighty history in the fur of her body, I stroke it all. I cannot see it for you, muscle, bone, delicate lace, lotus heart. Sweet your perfume, she has washed feet like this before. I drift beside her body, see castles and describe the raw edge of the egg. My hand knots in her fur, her hand reaches my hand, delicate embroidery. We are frozen momentarily, stifled by our understanding that morality is nothing but a fool nailed to a wooden cross. You move again, across my stomach, jangling my belly. Oh, he can wear his thorny crown and cry his blood-stained tears, despite the sorrow he has sown. We've jollier rings to wear. Sweet temple of her breast, body, our body. Yet here the brow, ah, strange brow, furrowed fields of past. Stranger, now, what will you again? I would know all your new secrets, each one. But silence, for who comes here? Silence as our bodies glide, one against the other. I run my tongue across her clitoris, bursts of fluid soak the sheets. As her body locks in orgasm, I feel the burning desert sand beneath my feet, see the rolling Nevada plains wiped in nuclear anguish. What have we done? Oh, Lord, what have we done? Nothing, a mere indiscretion. It is you that has done. I am no part of that death. There is no God to placate, no we, no us. It is I who asks, I alone. We each carry a name. We each have our dreams. We are responsible to no one. There is no responsibility, only liability. Are your parents a liability? Kill them. Your brother, sister, kill them. Your child, kill it. Husband, wife, friend, lover, kill them now. You deserve nothing. You are them. Me, I, stop it, stop it. I breathe in my own passion. You must let me unfold. No, it is I. I have not taken the body, will not touch the blood. It is yours. Give me it all if you will, but don't hold me responsible. I cannot take the blood, better a worm, you Christ. The crown of thorns is your mother's blood, touched by her ignorance, you gain person. Jeremy John Ratter, 8, 6, 43. Touched by her fear, you gain idea. Jeremy John Ratter, an idea of self, he has never felt. The crown is a reality, the brow scratched and bleeding, the loss of your mother's virginity. I may take that, please. I wear no shame, thank you. I shall not subscribe to the stigma of your impotency, vagabond. He could have had me, didn't I offer myself, proud? But no, rather the body torn than the body loved, quite contrary. There is no garden. He wears her shame upon his head. He didn't know how to die, because he'd never loved, never truly loved. Auschwitz was man's attempt to recreate the Garden of Eden before his sin. Adam strutted jack-booted with the whip before his sin. Eve is raped, gagged with the apple, bound in snakeskin. The blood falls upon the open moorlands, washed away in time, but never forgotten. Man destroys woman to placate his own guilt, to placate the guilt of his mother, the secret guilt of the Madonna. Is it any wonder that the cave was empty? 
vessels, vessels. Hiroshima was a tool in that desire, a mere flower. Am I not man? I would lie with her now, part her pink lips like meat, bite her lower lip, have her bite my lips like meat. I seek a refuge from the sophisticate. I am the barbarian, insane. I would kiss her now, take and enfold her. She is most precious, like jewels plucked from an angry sea. I seek change. I, the criminal. I could stop for her lips, but I seek change. What here? This limp flesh that hangs so pendulous between your legs, is it that you fear to love all the dead of history? Could you not carry him from the cave and love his body? Is it so void? Are the rot marks a mirror of your own repression? They burn the bodies heaped high. They burn the bodies. You designed the fabric. Do you see? I might have loved them all. I care not for their ill repair. Such fine weave. Delicate lace of flesh. You tore the fabric, pushing, pushing so hard, pushing, tore it. Is it any wonder that she stands so afraid? He hangs upon his cross like a mad old sardo, sharing his mother's misery. O oh, holy water, what dreadful thirst you quench. You placate desire with death, ideas of death, Ideas of self, the camp, the bomb. Is this the only manner in which man can achieve potency? Is guilt his only romance? I open your lips with my tongue, yet they will not shape their sorrow in me. This welt that I wear as a smile, is this your gift? Is it no more than life on life? Will we never feel... What bargain? What consequence? Is that the game that you play? Is your future so dependent on my silence? None of it. You shall feel me. Words again. Yes, words. I slide your vocabulary against mine, as if it was your body. What else in this terrible cold? Beneath the grey expressions, I see such rich colour. You said that they were forgotten. How wrong you are. I said that there were moments, gone now, for you. I am strong enough for all these worlds. I see no destruction. I see no violence. I shall not see you defiled. I wave now, the folds of earth on earth. See, my hand describes the form of death. It shall be contained. You reach for me. I sink into morbidity. I wave. My body softly falls beside yours. Do you feel me now? Can we not blend? We can learn. But for the while, we are both destroyed. Damn the blood and the sorrow. Take away those dreams of power and the weapons with which you attract it. Lay them against your churchy altar. I want none of that meat. Could I see you now? The sorrow is not ceased, nor even soothed. There was nothing but self. Alone self, self, dreadful self, I. Could I carve for you another form? What form that is not already described? Silence, the form of silence, our love. That silence is my knife edge. Draw it then. I draw it on your throat. You seek content in error. How mismatched. I, I am stifled here. Sing this passion. Sing. The knife has cut. The throat is slashed. Sing. Sing. There, there are no words. I, I, I choke on my own vomit. Sing now. Sing. Hear the braying. I swing the blade. It catches splinters in the post. Such discontent. Can I throw that away? Nothing, nothing at all. 
And what religion served your purpose? What choice guided you down this path? What ghastly Christ placated your desire? They carried him away. You know that. They carried him away, carelessly lost the body. How now to contain myself? How to brush off these memories? Each line that I write is mirrored in my face. See, I am beautiful. No. Each line is filled with that body. Yes. Is that not beautiful also? We are together there in the lines of my face, the livingness of me. Holding death by the hand, I walk. The cross is heavy on her back. I offer no help, equidistant. Such deep black soil, sour. My feet are sucked in. The bramble catches my hair. Nothing stretches our way. Nothing grows towards us. The blackthorn is a spiky wreath, terminating nowhere. I seek to lay her against the bushes. I am torn apart, pushing. The fabrics are too strong. Idea, my dear, death. Is this a natural intoxication, a mix that flew my way, midgebite, nightlight? Oh, I felt her in my belly, in my gut, in every part of me that lived. I sat with death, held her cold hand. There was no bargain to be made, my love against her silence, my soul against her darkness. I said that I had not been with her, clouded eyes that I spit to earth. I try to encompass her grief. She says that she has never loved. The cold wind forces me from my bed. I see her. I try to secure that hidden heart. It is there. <laughs> None of it. Noble death. What is that nobility? We bleed alone. Was it I who cried out in sorrow? The crows hold the air. Today, tomorrow, oh, how I desire the touch of flesh, for flesh undoes the grace of time. And in the dream of that caress, our bodies fuse, not yours, not mine. Flesh on flesh to fleshy make, body on body to body take. How buckled these bodies that should be upright. How bent these heads that so softly might have touched. I take the rotted corpse from the ditch. It has been left to decay. I gently part the fetid flesh that I may lay it. The sperm that drips onto this discoloured meat is another death. What am I? A follower of sorrow? Man? Woman? Child? A beast of the field? Beast of air or water? I care nothing. I am the barbarian. Insane. I have shared what I have to share. It is your reason that is defiled. Of condemnation I haven't a care. I loved the corpse and shall not be reviled. I loved the corpse, erased now, marked with my body, the sperm patch, erased. Nothing but the cold touch of winter the blue veil pity, nothing that these arms haven't felt. I slice mighty oak trees, one swipe, I turn to gently hold you. You smell the corpsiness of me, enter now, quick, you are within me. These legs, mountain scalers, memory is a tomb, empty, his tomb, empty. Scent of corpse, sperm damp, away. These arms carry great weights, coal, other minerals, wheat, other grains, metal and wood. Away, turn to you, the key is thrown away. You lie prostrate behind the locked door. I could be upon you, my flesh to you, body on body. Feel hair, feel textures, hardness and softness the livingness of me. Body on body. You wanted death, corpsey. Body on body, nothing but the intellect, cold probe intellect, stupid reason, mind treason, rationalize, see, explain, and die. No reason, no treason, 
Set that wordy word against your brow. Forget the books. Put these lies upon your designed future, all yours. Make what you will, Death Ray. Wordy make to wordy take. Blast you that saw no other spectre. How can I demonstrate this desire? Nothing but a faith that moves my hand in yours. Deadly cold. Mind body. Come now, are we apart? Our eyes meet in fear. See me, see me. You look away. It moves all about us, sweet, timid death, that will feel the breeze. The trees are bent now, the leaves half formed upon the branches. You say that the seasons have no end, yet I am caught in their beginnings. Spring, I part her lips with my tongue, run it across her teeth. She quivers and shivers, hardened against my body, her body. We are drawn forever together. No death, no infinity. Infinity is a concept for death. There is no way. We are together now, she death and me death, life our child. He sees the trees as extensions of her body. Let her be. The rich, deep belly jangle, now fire that flow flies from that knotted thigh. This juice that runs between our legs slides down these avenues of poplar. Crazy girl, boy, anew, I, you, we. The collarbone, I thread the collarbone, strands into infinity. No, no infinity, dreams of a permanent finite. I ask her what that means. Green, she replies. Green. Yes, it is green. Ideas, strands into infinity. No, turquoise, black. I touch green. Nothing but the morning. How then? I tear the note into many pieces. Unchanged, rest unchanged. Moist in her flesh, moist, bathed in the veils of her body. I too held all body, that her. Forced each part to my own fiber, fibers, all multiplicity denied. Oh, I bore him from the trellis work, ivy browed saviour. While I love your mother, you hang in your hideous self pity. Nothing to be mended, dying brother, in your doubt suspended. Hold me not, if hold me you cannot, but never forget that the shame is yours. Absolution is in the flesh, not hidden behind the temple doors. We could be lying, beard on stomach, brow on shoulder, legs entwined, yet in your search for anguished solitude, anguished solitude is all you'll find. Take this spike that shakes for you, this length of flesh that aches for you. Dear brother Christ, I'll share your breath but never your self-inflicted death. The shroud is sperm within the hour body. The shroud is lost within the hour body, stained in your dull equity. Lord, you could have had me in you, should have had me in you, could have felt the every strain of me. Not a word. Christ, you have never existed. I fuck a void. You have never existed. I fuck a void, a vessel. Bathed in your blood my life has been, swathed in your hideous self-esteem. What glamour called you down this path? What message written on the wall? What ghastly lie disguised as truth convinced you to accept your fall? Father, forgive. They know not what they do. They knew precisely. They crucified you. Dear Jesus, pray not for me. I have my own merry cross to bear. Die not for me, foolish boy. I have a happy lock to share. I care only to come again, never reborn. If you had my body, it too would be torn. Your sorrow will not be pressed upon my feet. Your death ensured that we could never meet as friends.
your heaven is such sad, distant anguish. Die, stiff master, for God's sake, finally die. Oh, I love you. That is so short that I simply throw it away. Another kind of infinity that still awaits definition. I can't talk on that. It catches stunted thorns within my throat. Will you be there to share the festivities? Yes? I can slide across you then, our body. Drawn as if the plug were removed, center spine, fragile bending columns. You cannot hold too firm. Hands that describe new avenues across my bed. Just one chance. Two particles of time, space, collision, life, not precious but pointless, contorted into the living flesh. How then is form given? Expanded, exploded, the body-mind, comic afterbirth, space cowboy bound in conception, stripped in the silver light, drained totally of fluid. So why the fall from grace? Being too self-conscious, conception is the bear trap. The animal is boxed up for the cage, stuffed alive for the museum, hurled into a world that is already describing, organizing and manipulating. The beast is defiled, poor child, dead at birth. The formless takes on form through definition. There is no substance to it. Just arbitrary social decisions. They were already made. Poor child is trapped, has no option but to submit. One day, all this will be yours. Yours, mine, no account of poor child, no account of its inherent nature. It never learns to grow. It is only grown, cultivated, pruned, trimmed and butchered. At birth, the spirit clung to the body of poor child. The spirit is the moistness of our bodies, sometimes returned to in love, sometimes clinically mopped away with swabs and powders. Poor child cries, no one survives. There are no words for survival, it was an afterthought. Distressed, erased, what is this twist? No tale of spirit, lost in the translation, submerged in tomorrow's oppression. The worldly idea of spirit is a hypothetical nightmare created by those who would claim that not everything is erased. They understand nothing of it. There are no words with which to backtrack. They communicate with the very words that have destroyed their ability to communicate in words. Better mute.